Hi everybody! Earlier this week I got a really good question about the different types of corset laces and even though I've talked about this a little bit in the past, I never actually dedicated a full um, video to it. So today I'm going to be talking about seven different types of corset laces, the pros and cons of using each of them, uh, which ones are my particular favorites for what uh, purposes and in which corsets, and, uh, and all of that. So I'm going to show you all of these laces close up in the next few minutes, but just as a general introduction from the left here, this is a uh, just a round uh, sort of woven cord. This is 550 paracord. This is rat tail lacing. This is single faced satin ribbon, half an inch wide. This is double faced satin ribbon. This is, I believe, the cotton flat lacing. And this is the, uh, the polyester flat lacing. So the first one I want to talk about is this round braided cord. So you will usually find this in off the rack corsets. Um, it's obviously round, not flat, and it's usually about an eighth of an inch in width. So um, this is polyester based, so it is pretty strong fiber. Some of you might remember that when I talk about uh, the different fabrics or fibers to use in corsets, I almost exclusively use cotton for uh, the strength layer of my corsets, but I will almost exclusively use a polyester based uh, fiber for the laces because uh, they seem to be a little bit stronger and last a little longer in my experience. Um, so this one actually has a bit of spring. It's, it's maybe stretching a quarter of an inch here, but when you multiply that by however many meters are in a corset, you know, five or six meters um, or six or seven yards, then the spring can get pretty frustrating sometimes. So this is why this is not my favorite. Because of the thinness, it tends to hold the bows pretty well, but I notice that when I'm lacing up, it cuts into my hands. Now, I realize that is very subjective because some of you may have sort of harder wearing hands than I do. Next up is the 550 Paracord, shown here in green. It comes in a multitude of colors online. You can find it in almost any color if you look hard enough. Uh, I found a bunch of them on eBay in bulk. You can get them in like 100 meter or 100 yard lengths and then just cut them to size for all of your corsets if you really wanted to. This is one of the strongest, if not the strongest cord used for corsetry today. It's called 550 Paracord because it's able to withstand up to 550 pounds of tension before breaking. Um, and it's called paracord because it was often used in uh, parachuting. So uh, that's why this is used in a lot of emergency situations. You'll find bracelets online that are sort of uh, woven with this that you can take with you if you're hiking or camping or rafting. Uh, so if you fall down a cliff or if you uh, get swept away by a current, then you can throw this around an object and it will stop you from falling or uh, being swept away basically. And in the Romanticy book, I believe Anne Grogan says that a corset can put up to 90 pounds of pressure on the torso, so this should well withstand this. But that is where the good things end for this cord, in my opinion, uh, because I find it quite bulky. It actually it has uh, this outer coating that is the green part, and then inside it, I believe it has nine more cords inside of it, and so it's very bulky, and I find that it's difficult to tie the, the knots uh, and the bows very securely. I find that it's bulky underneath the clothing, and uh, this one actually has the aglet on it. It's, it's melted off at the end there so that the cord doesn't spin inside of the, the coating. Uh, but if it weren't, then I find that it, it sort of like twists upon itself and gets really twirly, um, which is, I don't know, I, I kind of don't like that feeling uh, when I'm trying to lace up. Again, I find that it's hard on my hands when I'm pulling it. But I know that a lot of people swear by this cord and they love it. Uh, an another thing that you can actually do is um, if you're laces come like this, you can snip off the aglet part, pull out those nine uh, cords in the middle, and this green part will just flatten out. And it is fairly strong on its own, obviously it's not going to take up to 550 pounds of tension, but uh, it is pretty strong, strong enough to, for corsetry, and uh, it will act more like a flat lacing, and you don't have to sacrifice any of the color. And now we get to uh, sort of the hybrid between the round cord and the satin laces. This is satin uh, rat tail lacing, and apparently this is pretty difficult to find in Europe, um, but I've always been able just to walk in my local fabric land and go to the ribbons and notions section and they sell this on a roll. So you're looking for three millimeter wide 
satin rat tail cord. Uh, it has no spring to it and it is surprisingly surprisingly strong for uh, its tiny tiny width. You can fit this sort of cord into very small grommets if you prefer the look of double zero grommets or even X zero zero grommets, uh, this will fit through just fine. Uh, and it also comes in a multitude of colors. Uh, however, because it has the, the sort of satiny coating, um, it can sort of catch and start to fray and look bad if you have split grommets. Um, and so you'll notice that it, it catches a little bit more than if you're using one of the cords or the um, or the, the shoelace style laces. But I love how small this is, and I, I'm not sure why, but it doesn't cut into my hands as much as uh, the other cords, probably maybe because of the, the smoother and sleeker outside here. Uh, it causes a little bit less friction. Uh, because it has less friction, you do have to be careful about tying a proper knot and a proper bow, otherwise it might slip out a little bit. But I love the fact that this hides so well underneath clothing. So uh, I first saw this used in Madame Cher's corsets and is also used in uh, Creation La Scarpelette. More people need to experiment with this type of lace and see if it's right for them. And now we get into the satin ribbon. And uh, depending on the corseteer you talk to, they will either recommend using ribbon or they will uh, not recommend using it. So that's it's kind of a, a matter of personal preference. Um, I've heard some people claim that um, ribbons have not lasted very long. They've either stretched out or uh, broken on them. Uh, more than likely they have been using the single-faced satin ribbon. So this is single-faced satin ribbon and I'm not sure if you can see the texture on either side. This side is shiny and it's very smooth and this side it has more of a texture and it almost looks like grow grain if you look at it up close. So this is called single face ribbon because it's supposed to uh, be facing this side up, the shinier side and smoother side up, uh, whereas this side is not. And by contrast, this is double face satin ribbon, so um, I'm not sure if you can see that. It is the same texture on both sides. It's, uh, it's smooth and shiny on both sides. And I'm not sure if this is really coming out on camera, but if you just go to the fabric store and you're able to feel or see double face satin and single face satin side by side close up, the difference is totally noticeable. Double face satin ribbon is also used in ribbon cinchers as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's quite strong, very non-stretch. So when satin ribbon is used in corsets, uh, it's most often half inch wide or uh, one centimeter wide like these. And um, I believe Starker's corsetry uses slightly less um, less wide ribbon that she might use three eighths of an inch wide, I believe was in my Starker's corset. Obviously laces can be switched out. So, it, you know, it, it's it's sort of a matter of preference as well. Um, my totally wasted corset, I believe had one inch wide satin ribbon and that was just so lush and it's sort of luxurious lacing up with a ribbon that, that thick and that wide. But you do have to be careful because if your grommets are very small and then your ribbon is very thick or wide, then you run into friction issues and it might be harder to lace up or unlace. But that might work to somebody's advantage because if you are working with say half inch wide satin and you're using size zero grommets that are a bit larger, some people complain that satin is too slippery. So maybe you, it, you just need to find the right combination of the width of the ribbon with uh, the size of the grommet so that you get just enough friction that you like. I will warn though that satin ribbon can catch very easily on um, split grommets and it can fray and start to look kind of bad. And enough fraying over time can cause the ribbon to break down and possibly snap later on. But another thing that I love about satin ribbon is the fact that it is so incredibly flat that it hides so well underneath clothing. And lastly, I'm gonna show you these flat shoelace style laces. And you will find these probably the most often in corsets, uh, both off the rack and custom corsets, uh, especially waist training corsets, because these are uh, ubiquitous. <laughs> you know, they're very easy to find, very easy to source, they're cheaper, and they're a workhorse. You know, you know they're, they're gonna last a pretty long time. Um, 
because they're a little bit flatter and wider, I find that they hold the bow well. They uh, hide decently well underneath clothing, if that's an, an issue for you. Um, they're quite strong and they don't cut into my hands quite as much as long as I lay it flat like that and not on its side or twisted. But generally, they're just easy to find and easy to replace. Uh, if you buy the cotton laces, and these are the cotton ones, uh, they feel a little bit softer and fuzzier to the touch. And if you are able to do a burn test, then you'll notice it'll just smoke and, and burn away. Whereas these are the polyester laced ones. And uh, if you were to burn a sample of this, then you'll notice it will melt. So if you're shopping for laces and you're specifically looking for uh, either cotton or polyester, then uh, the burn test will tell you which one it is if you if uh, the uh, package doesn't tell you. Please don't go burning things in the store though. Maybe ask for a sample and you know, take it outside. <laughs> Some of the advantages to cotton is that uh, I guess it's it's more eco-friendly, obviously. Cotton and natural fibers in general tend to absorb dyes better. So if you buy cotton lace in white um, and then you throw the laces in with your corset fabric if you're dyeing it, then it will probably come out close to the same color, which is one advantage. Whereas with polyester or nylon or other synthetic based fibers, uh, they tend not to dye quite as well, although there are special dyes you can buy and you can make the water really, 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 really hot and it will give a slight tinge to uh, a previously white uh, polyester lace. Um, I personally find that when it comes to uh, waist training corsets that the polyester lace is uh, a better choice because it seems to wear down less quickly. I've had um, these cotton laces actually snap on me after a few months of wear and I've never had one of these polyester um, laces snap on me yet. So almost all of these types of laces can be found in a good local uh, fabric or notions or craft store, uh, maybe with the exception of the 550 paracord because I had to find that online. The rat tail lacing I was easily able to find in my local fabric store, but you can also find it on eBay. I can put a link below. Um, both the cotton laces and the polyester flat laces here I found uh, through Timeless Trends and I believe they discontinued the cotton laces and they're only carrying uh, the polyester based ones as well. Uh, their ribbon laces I believe are single face satin ribbon and not double faced satin ribbon. Um, and the 550 paracord here as well as the double face satin ribbon uh, I got these through Orchard Corset. And uh, then for the round cord I'm not entirely sure where you can get that but I generally don't recommend them anyway. <laughs> so uh, yeah, there's that. So I hope this cleared up some confusion between the different types of corset laces and what applications they would be good for. Uh, leave me a comment down below and let me know what uh, type of lace is your favorite that you like to use in your corsets. And I'll see you in a few days for the next video. Bye.